Networking is my least favorite word. I don't like it. But as somebody in the entertainment industry, you probably know as well as I do, you have to do it. You have to find a happy medium where you feel comfortable walking into a room full of your peers or full of people who you wish were your peers in the area of the industry you're working in and going into that room with confidence, feeling like you have something to bring to the table, something to offer and a way for you to stand out. It's not always easy. I totally get it. I would much rather stay home on my couch watching Netflix or working on something behind my computer screen than having to walk into a room full of people and make small talk. I have been on both sides of the networking game. I have been the one walking into a networking event, not really knowing many people, seeing somebody that I really admire and would love to work with and freezing when it comes to the point of me having the opportunity to speak with them. And what I've found is that it really just comes down to being prepared. I have also had the opportunity to be on the other end where someone has walked up to me and introduced themselves and made a pitch to me about who they are and what they do in the industry. So I know what it feels like to be on both ends and both sides of this situation. Today, I want to give you guys some info about how you can actually walk into these networking events, what to do, what not to do, and how to even begin networking if you are brand new to Nashville. Okay, so first and foremost, you have either moved to Nashville or you're working really steadily in the area that you currently live in. Now, if you are a singer or a songwriter or a musician, the first order of business to start your networking venture is to actually just make people aware of what you do. Now that might sound easy and it might sound like a given to some of you, but maybe not to everybody. I know a lot of times people can be insecure about something new they've started. Maybe you've been testing the waters with singing and you've just now started to gain a little bit of traction. Does everybody who knows you in your circle know that this is something that you want to do, you have to ask yourself that question because if they don't know, how are they going to know to put you in touch with their friend who runs the venue that you have always dreamt of performing at? Now that's just one example, but realistically, there are a whole group of people in your immediate circle that you may not even know the connections that they have to offer you. So First and foremost, make sure that you have the opportunity to, in a conversation, let everybody know around you what it is you're doing and what your specific goals are. So if you are looking to get more bookings, if you're looking to have more people come out to the bookings you already have, let your friends know. Say, hey, would you mind helping me organize a core group of people to just show up at my show? I really need some cool posts for social media and it would help me a lot if you could come and just support me with your group of people. It's as simple as that really, just making people aware of what you do. So when they're in a situation and they hear something like, we need an artist for this big corporate event that we're putting together, they're gonna think, oh, so-and-so would be perfect for this. And I know that because he or she is working really hard right now to get new bookings and gigs, and she's developing a following in this area. Okay, so the next point I wanna make is actually finding places to network. One of the questions I get a lot is, where should I go? Where do I hang out? How do I find the people that I actually wanna work with? How do I even know where they are going to be? So that's actually a hard thing and there's no real solid answer for it. However, you can kind of start to figure that out if you hang around, especially a place like Nashville for a little while. You're gonna start understanding, okay, the, the songwriters that I really would love to write with one day, they all tend to hang out at these five different places where they have writer's rounds a lot. So what you're gonna start doing is developing your plan of, okay, on Tuesday nights, I go to this place because that's where a lot of the people hang out that I want to be introduced to one day. And I know that sometimes it can be hard when you're sitting at home to think, oh my gosh, tonight I have to get dressed up and go out and be on and talk to these people and kind of prove myself and show my worth. And you don't have to actually put that amount of pressure on yourself. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is when they are in a networking position, they walk into it with their salesperson attitude. Like I have to pitch myself, I have to score this deal, I have to make them love me. It doesn't have to be that way. And honestly, if it's not that way, it's going to come off more authentic and it's gonna come off less as a sales pitch, which is something you never want networking to really be. 
because it's going to always end up being about your personal relationships with these people that gains you the opportunity you want in the end. So if you start doing your research, I know in a place like Nashville, there are so many resources like the Nashville scene and different things. Even on Facebook, you can find out where events are going to be held. So do your research. If there is a couple songwriters in town you really would love to meet, just check out their social media, see where they're performing, see where they're gonna be, and then go out and introduce yourself. It's pretty simple. Now, when you get to the higher level of things like record producers and things like that, the goal is that once you make enough friends in the business, they're going to know what it is that you do and they're going to then hopefully invite you to those bigger events to get yourself started there are organizations like nsai if you're with a pro like bmi or ascap or csac they tend to have events a lot there are a lot of communities and things like that that you can start getting involved in to start getting yourself into the minds of other people and hopefully invited to these bigger event opportunities Okay, so let's say you have been lucky enough to have been invited to an event where there are a lot of really important people in the music industry. Now, I know for one, being at some events like this, it's chaotic, there are a lot of people. So how are you going to be the one that stands out and that actually makes an impression, something memorable to these people? Let's talk over a scenario. So you go to event, an event with your friend and your friend says to you, I really wanna introduce you to XYZ. They are doing this great thing in the music industry and there's someone you really need to know. Okay, boom, here's your chance. You have gone out, you have worked really hard, you have created this whole career for yourself and now here's your opportunity to meet somebody that may actually be able to help you take your career to the next level. What are you going to do? Okay, so your mutual friend walks you up to this person. Hi, this is so-and-so, it's really nice to meet you, blah, 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 you shake hands, and then you're in a position to start a conversation. One of the best pieces of advice I can give to you is to start your conversation not on music or your career. Try to find some common ground with this person. Maybe they have a really nice jacket on and you're like, hey, I love your jacket, where did you get that? I'm really into looking at vintage clothing and I would love some recommendations on shopping in the area. Whatever you can try to figure out to start the conversation of some common ground. Maybe your common ground is the person who introduced you. Hey, how did you meet so-and-so? That could also lead to the opportunity of you saying, oh, I met her because I'm a songwriter. Okay, boom, then it starts the conversation of you actually telling this person what it is you do. So what you don't want to do is walk up to this person and say, hi, I'm JC. I'm a singer and a songwriter and I would love to work with you. That is gonna kill it right then and there. Because if this person is somebody who works in the industry, chances are they're working with everybody else who is also doing the same thing as you, but they're also having so many other people come up to them and say, hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm a singer, I'm a songwriter. There are a million singer-songwriters in Nashville who are trying to get into this person's good graces. So how are you going to be a person that stands out? If you find a common ground with the person that you're talking to, no matter what it is, compliment them. Ask them about what brought them to that event tonight. Ask them about the mutual friend who introduced you. How do you know this person? Ask them about anybody else in the room. Oh, have you met so-and-so? They're a friend of mine. Anything you can think of to start a conversation on a personal level, that is going to be your best form of networking because making a sales pitch the second you're introduced to somebody is a sure way to get them to not want to talk to you again. Not because you're not a nice person or you're not a great singer or songwriter or whatever it is that you do, but because you're a dime a dozen in Nashville, they don't know what makes you special yet. So having a personal connection with somebody is always the best way to open the door to show them why you are such a great singer or songwriter or a musician. Now, once you found this common ground, you have given this person something to remember you by. Oh, that was the girl who talked to me about my jacket. She loved vintage stores. Or that was the girl who knew so-and-so that I also knew. Isn't that funny? We met in a similar way. Once you've created that foundation, you can then take that relationship to a new level. For instance, if you did ask them about something they're wearing and 
what store they got it at. Maybe you have gone to that store a few weeks later and you can shoot them a quick Facebook message. Thank you so much for the recommendation. I loved it and I bought XYZ there. That's another opportunity to keep a conversation going, which actually brings me to my next subject and that is the follow-up. So once you've met this person, you have talked to them, you have exchanged some sort of conversation, some on a personal level, some sort of um, information about each other. Um, you've gone home and it's a couple days later. Here is your perfect opportunity to create a follow-up. Always, always add them on social media, not in a stalker way. Don't go on there and like like 40 of their pictures because that's going to be a little bit weird. But if you go online and just shoot them a quick message, so nice meeting you the other night. I hope to see you around town again soon. It's just going to keep that refresher in their brain of who you are. And then once you've done the thing that you've had the common ground on, like, you know, my example of the jacket, you have that open door to go, hey, it was really nice to meet you. I loved the store you recommended, or I actually met so-and-so that you spoke about at the event. Whatever it may be that you can find common ground with this person, follow up with them and try to keep that connection and conversation going. I guarantee you it will eventually lead to either you meeting that person again or you finding an opportunity to say, hey, let's go have coffee sometime. I would love to talk to you a little bit more. It was a crowded room. I didn't really get to know you as well as I hoped to. So that's going to open up a conversation for you to actually go ahead and then do that. And if they bite and they say, yeah, I would love to hear from you a little bit more. Let's set up a coffee date. That's awesome. If not, no big deal. Chances are you're probably going to run into them at another networking event. And by this point, you'll have known them. So you can walk up and say, hey, I don't know if you remember me. So-and-so introduced us at the blah, blah, blah event. And that's going to continue your relationship. Nashville is the kind of place that it's really built on who you know and the person that comes to mind. So the more that you're around the people who are looking for other people to do the things that you want, the more opportunity you're going to have to actually the, be the person that comes to mind when they are thinking, who can I ask to do this? The more that you're around, the more that you're in their frame of mind, the more opportunity you're going to have to be the person that gets that opportunity. With that being said, I wanted to talk quickly about business cards because I have had a couple conversations with people recently about when is it appropriate to whip out your business card? Hey, call me, you know, and I just, I feel kind of torn on this situation. So for me, I typically only give a business card out if the conversation completely leads itself to me saying, yes, here's my contact information, let's stay in touch. Or if I hear somebody say, hey, do you know who anyone who does X, Y, and Z? Actually, I do that. Here's my card, feel free to reach out to me. Or if I'm in a situation where I've had a really nice, lengthy conversation with someone and I said, we should definitely keep in touch, here's my business card. But what I won't do is walk up to somebody, meet them for two seconds and say, here I am, check me out, here's my website, follow me on social media, I do this, that and the other thing. That's not the way to do it. So there's a right way and a wrong way and you just kind of have to feel that out for yourself and try to figure out when it feels most appropriate. Because you never want to be that person who's like, hey, here's my business card, why don't you check me out on social media? That's not the cool thing to do and you're just gonna kind of be looked at as sleazy. So I would avoid doing it unless it feels 100% right to you. Another point I wanna make is when you're in a situation, and this, this kind of goes along with what I was talking about before, um, if you're in a situation to meet somebody that you feel could be beneficial to your career, one of my biggest pet peeves is when somebody will walk up to me or someone else in the room that is of influence in the industry and start bragging about the things that they have done. Hey, I'm a songwriter. I just moved to Nashville. Yeah, I'm writing with X, Y, and Z. Or yeah, I'm a singer. I'm actually working with so-and-so's producer. That is not the way that you want to be perceived by other people. Now, that doesn't go to say that you shouldn't be confident and speak about yourself when you are having the opportunity to answer a question like, well, what are you doing here? And, um, you know, what did you do back in your hometown? There's a right way and a wrong way to kind of throw in some resume spots. You just have to kind of feel out the situation and figure out if it's the best timing for you to go, 
oh, you know, I know that you've worked with so-and-so. Actually, I've worked with them too. There is a common ground piece of conversation that you can actually squeeze in that doesn't make you look like you are a little miss braggadocious or whatever. So you've been introduced to somebody and you're in a position to talk with them. It's more common for people to want to talk about themselves because you feel like you might have only five minutes with this person. How are you going to make the sell of who you are and why this person should be interested in you in the first place? And it's human nature to want to go, hey, I've done this, 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 and this. This is why you should like me. This is why you should work with me. I want to work with you, blah, blah, blah. But you, you've got to pull yourself back from that for a second. And remember, one of the things that makes you memorable when you're in a networking event is how you make somebody else feel. And I truly 100% believe this because when I look over the course of my life and the people that I've met, the people who have walked up to me and started a conversation, I can remember clearly the ones who made me feel a certain way, whether it be important to that person or that that person was actually really interested in what I had to say, or if they came up to me and all they wanted to do was talk about themselves and no matter what I said, the conversation turned around back to them, that's never going to make that person feel good about talking to you. So the best way to handle the situation is if you do get to walk up to somebody that you really want to meet, ask them about themselves. Like we all know, people like talking about themselves and it makes them comfortable because it's something they know. It's not something they have to make small talk on. So if you're introduced to a Grammy award winning producer, ask them, hey, are you working on any cool projects lately? Whatever it is that you can think about to actually turn the conversation on to them, it's going to make them feel good and that's going to reflect really well on you. So now you have met these people, you have had a conversation started, you have followed them on social media, you have sent them a quick DM thanking them for whatever information they gave you or whatever conversation had started. Now you want to take it to the next level. This is where I highly suggest sending an email and it can be something as simple as it was so nice to connect with you, you know, that night I wanted to reach out to you again and see if I could buy you a coffee and just talk with you a little bit more. If you offer to buy them a coffee, not many people are going to say no to that. I would not say no to that. If you want to buy me a coffee, send me a quick email, let me know. You can buy me a coffee all day long. My point is, if you want to give this person the inkling that it might be a good thing for them to meet with you, just let them know in an email. It was so great to meet you. Let me buy you a coffee. Let me buy you lunch. I would love to talk with you a little bit more and get to know you. I'm new to the area. Whatever it may be, 50-50, they're going to get back to you and say, hey, yeah, definitely. I'm free, you know, on this date. Some people you're never going to hear back from, and that's okay. But the fact that you've reached out and made that connection, they're probably going to read your email and remember who you are. So the next time you run into them at a networking event, maybe that will open up the door further for you to then get the opportunity to sit down with them. If there's one thing I've learned in Nashville and living here and working in the music industry on so many different areas and on so many different levels is that it takes a long time to grow in this town because networking isn't something that you can actually just go do it, achieve it and reach the goal. It's about relationships and relationships take time. I don't care if they're friendships or if they are somebody that you are dating or married to. Relationships take work. They take time to grow. And it's the same thing in the music business. When you meet somebody, they're not just going to go, oh, this is the person I've been waiting for to walk up to me and say, hi, let me make you a star. That's not how it works. You have to form relationships. You have to be around these people a lot. You have to get into their consciousness so that when an opportunity does come around, they think of you. So it's all about time and nurturing relationships, just like in anything else. So don't be hard on yourself if things haven't started the ball rolling as fast as you would like. Eventually the ball will roll and you will start to form a circle and you will be better at networking. And the relationships that you have started to build from day one will eventually turn out to be something, whether it's a support system or an opportunity for you. So just be easy on yourself. Take the time that you need to figure out the best ways that work for you to network and go out there and just be yourself. 
If there is one thing I can leave you with here today is when you're in these opportunities and you are around people that you want to get to know better, that you want to be like, that you aspire to work with, the best thing you can do is be yourself. Nobody wants a copycat of somebody else. There are already a hundred versions of every country artist in Nashville. Be unique, be yourself, and that's what's going to make you stand out the most. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget, if you have any other questions and comments about any of the things we talked about today, leave them in the comment section below so I can help you and try to answer any questions you might have further about networking in Nashville. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.